Hello, this video is part of my Canvas tutorials series on my YouTube channel. So if you use Canvas and you would like to know about the new updates that Canvas just is really rolling out now and that are eventually going to become permanent, right now in 2020, this video is for you. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right in and let me show you the four new tools that Canvas has implemented. Let's jump in. So the first thing I want to show you is the new rich content editor or RCE. If you click on settings at the bottom left hand corner in any course, and if you click feature options at the top right, this is going to show you the features that are available to you. Now, again, yours may look a little bit different than mine, depending on your institution. If you scroll down here to the RCE enhancements, you can tick that on by clicking the X. If it turns green and there's a check mark, that means you have now enabled the new rich content editor. Now, this is just an option right now for you. You can tick it on or you can tick it off. It's already probably off right now. But of January 2021, this new content is going to be replacing the current or the older version of the rich content editor. So if you want to try it out now, you can kind of get ahead on that before it goes into effect in January. After you tick that on now, not only will you have the rich content editor in this course, but all of your students will have it as well. So I've ticked this one on. Now let me show you what that actually looks like for your students. Also, while we're here, if you go down to the very bottom and see RCE autosave, if you'd like to tick that on, you can click here and see that it says it's going to autosave your work as you go. I always like to auto save like Google Docs. So if you'd like to tick that on, you can always come back here and tick it off anytime that you would like. So let's see what that looks like. If you go into the top button and you click add assignments, okay, here is the new rich content editor that you will have across the board in this course. You can see that there's this edit button that you can click on and you have different options here. It's really great. You can click insert and you can put a link, an image. It looks a little bit different, a little updated, a little bit more user friendly. Notice you have different types of headers right here. You can code in here quite easily. Different blocks here as well. You can choose different fonts right here, different font sizes. You can do different aligns right here. You have different options and also text color is here as well and background color. You can go over here to tools. You can do a word count. That's really kind of amazing if you need it, especially if your students need it in any of your assignments. You can insert tables here and whatnot. And then you have this toolbar right here that looks a little bit nicer. It's easier to read. You have external links, course links. You can easily upload images right here. What this is doing is it's taking and removing that that block on the far right side where we used to update. So if you've noticed some of my older videos from like March or April, the file upload is on the right side. Now with the new rich content editor, it's actually already built into the toolbar in the rich content editor update. You can also click here and upload and record different media. And you can click over here, upload documents. You have different plugins here that you can use as well. Here's some apps and whatnot if you'd like to pull from um, Vimeo or Wikipedia or YouTube, that's all here as well. And you still have other functions on the far right. You can see the word count, you can see it's accessibility, you have other options here as well. And then your, um, your um, editors are still on the far right instead of at the top now. So you have a lot of other options as well. Also down here in the rich content editor, you can find the external tools down here by clicking find and it loads it up here for you. The second update I wanna show you is the new quizzes update. Now I haven't done a tutorial on how to use the new quizzes yet. It just is rolling over. Let me show you the options you have and how long you have it until new quizzes takes over. So here's an example of a new quiz that I created in this class just as a test. Here is your new quiz. It is very, very different than the old quiz. But I'm gonna tell you, so far, I really like it. It has a lot more options. I'm gonna do a tutorial on this coming up. I just wanted to show you the options as well. Now again, to enable this new quiz, I wanna show you how to do that if you'd like to. 
In July of 2021, you are only going to have access to the new quizzes. You will no longer have access to classic quizzes, according to the recent updates from Canvas. So let me show you how to access that function if you'd like to use both right now. So again, go to the course that you would like to try this out in, go down to the bottom of settings. We're going to go into that feature options again, that tab at the top right. And then here's where you have the new quizzes function. You can tick that on, the check mark will turn green and that will enable the new quizzes in that course. Now, so far from what I can tell, you do have to go into every single course to do that. So make sure you um, have that option set on all of your courses. So let me show you an example of that again. Here is the example of the quiz of what it looks like, the new updated version. It's in blocks now. It's a little bit easier to read and you have a lot more functions. So let me show you an example over here. After you enable that, you are still going to have access to both the classic quizzes and the new quizzes. So you can try them both out. If you go to the top right, after you quick click the quizzes tab on the left, click the top right button for add quiz. You're going to have the option if you want to go back to classic quizzes or if you would like to new choose new quizzes and you can remember that for later. So you will have that option for the time being. So you click new quiz, click submit, and then it will take you into the new quiz feature. I'm going to do an entire tutorial about all the new quiz functions and updates for you coming up in the future. The third update I want to show you is new analytics. Now I did do a tutorial about this a few weeks ago. I will link it down in the description box. It takes you through all of the new updated analytics in canvas. That's been around for just a little bit of time. But if you want to check that out, go over here on the far right. This is on my home page of a course. Click on new analytics. When you click on new analytics, it is going to pop up and show you all of your analytics here in the updated new version that they have. If you want a full tutorial of the new analytics, I will put it down in the description box below and you can watch that entire video. The fourth update I want to share with you is the new Google assignments integration, which does replace the Google tool that was there before prior. Let me show you quickly how to do this. So go to the top right hand button in your course that you'd like to add an assignment, click the add assignment button after you fill in this normal information. If you scroll down here to external tools and notice that I am in the old rich content editor in this course, click on the external tool for submission type, click on the far right button here that says find. And then we're going to go down to Google Docs and this says cloud assignment in the school. Again, every school is a little bit different here. So then you want to scroll down to the assignment you want. Let's say I'm doing this acting template. I want to submit it to them. This is just a, a Google Doc. I'm going to click again, select. It's going to pop it up in here. I could load it in a different tab for the student if I'd like to. I'd fill out all this information. I'd click save. And then let's give it an assignment type here. Okay. I would click save. And then after I do that, it's going to pop it up right here in this browser. It is going to, as you see at the top, it's going to give them a copy that they can modify for their assignments. Now I haven't started using this yet, but it does look like it's really accessible. Again, keep in mind that every time you bring them in and out of canvas, it is a little bit more challenging for them. So again, if you can keep everything in canvas, the better, but this is a good way to use some Google docs. If that's where you're working from, from previous classes, or if you've already done Google classroom, it's a great integration to kind of help you get started. Those are the most recent updates for canvas. I hope this was helpful for you. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more videos in the future and I will see you in the next video. All right. Bye. <laughs>